Hello, my name is Jacob Lefker, and I am a financial coach with the Community College Credit Building Initiative. Today's topic for the workshop will be spending plans. Spending plans are often referred to as budgets. In today's workshop, we will discuss why it's important, first of all, to reframe the name of a budget to a spending plan in order to have a different mindset when we approach how we're spending our money. The Community College Credit Building Initiative is an initiative based in the city of Boston that provides free financial coaching as well as workshops like this to students at community colleges in Boston. What does this workshop cover today? We are going to cover why create a spending plan, spending plan practice, and why reframing, as I mentioned before, our approach to spending is so critical to ensuring that we are sticking to our spending plans as well. So what do we spend money on? We spend money on many, many different things. Groceries are one of the most important categories. Transportation is certainly very important as well. We spend money on our utility counts, electricity, gas, water in many cases, even garbage removal. We also spend money in order to live in a physical place, whether that's rent for an apartment um, or for a room, or if it's a mortgage for a house. We also spend money on entertainment. This can come in the form of uh, entertainment on our phones, um, web subscriptions, uh, and other service provider subscriptions, uh, as well as going to physical concerts, to shows, uh, to performances, and to the movies as well. And last but not least, we spend money on communication, especially in terms of our phones, but also in general, in terms of the internet. So these are some of the most important categories that we spend money on. Now, it's important to remember that spending is not necessarily a bad thing. This is important to recall because it's necessary. It's necessary to spend money in order to live, in order to have a roof over our heads, in order to feed our bodies, uh, in order to clothe our bodies, in order to move our bodies in terms of physical exercise, uh, in terms of transportation. Uh, and it's also needed in order to communicate, to feel that we can interact with others, uh, and to have fun. So let's reframe our approach to budgeting and spending. And by doing so, with the resources and the tools I'll provide today, you will have the overall tool set necessary to not only create a spending plan, um, but to do so in a way that feels empowering uh, and in a way that also aligns with um, your income and what you have to pay out each month as well. So what are the next steps? First and foremost, it's important to write short and long-term goals for ourselves. I love the approach um, that's called the SMART approach to writing out and determining these goals for ourselves. So SMART stands for Specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable, and time-bound goals. By adding in these five qualifiers to the creation of our goals, we give ourselves both a framework and accountability in order to achieve those goals in the time frame that we set for ourselves. So if I have an, an example of, I want to become rich one day, this would certainly not qualify as an S-M-A-R-T goal. Why is that? It's not specific, right? It doesn't actually provide uh, myself with any time frame or any specific amount that would qualify me in my own eyes as being rich. In addition, it's not necessarily measurable for the same reasons. So how would I make this into an S-M-A-R-T goal? I would specify the amount. I would like to become a millionaire by the time that I am 40 years old. So in this particular case, we see that the goal is specific. I want to be a millionaire. It's also measurable. 
that millionaire threshold is how I'm measuring my determination for myself of when I'm going to achieve this, uh, excuse me, of how I will achieve this goal. It's attainable because um, that is a possibility for me um, and for many people to accomplish a goal like this uh, by achieving new jobs, by um, securing uh, and maintaining a portfolio of investments, uh, and by purchasing assets that grow in value over time in order to increase my net worth. So it's also a relatively reasonable goal. Becoming a billionaire might be much less likely for someone uh, than becoming a millionaire. So in this particular case, the millionaire goal by the time that I'm 40 uh, is also relatively reasonable. And last but not least, it provides a timeline. That 40, um, by the year, by my age of 40, uh, that is the timeline that I'm providing for myself. So this is how I would reframe my initial uh, goal of I want to be rich one day uh, into the framework of an S-M-A-R-T goal. And why is this important? This is really important because it, as I mentioned, helps me to think about, okay, what do I need to change in my life currently? Where can I spend less in order to save more and therefore increase my overall net worth? And where can I apply the money that I'm making uh, in order to help it grow um, and develop uh, and maintain itself um, on an upward trajectory in terms of growth over the long run so that I can achieve this goal. And just as importantly, I'm giving myself a time frame to achieve that goal as well. After creating smart plans and smart goals based on those smart plans, we want to then create a spending plan itself. So by creating a spending plan and by sticking to it, we can move our goals forward um, in the way that will help us to uh, accomplish those goals and create new ones that we can accomplish in the future as well. Last but not least, after, creating your, after writing your SMART goals, as well as creating the spending plan to achieve those goals, we want to grow a savings fund for emergencies, and that should also be part of the spending plan that we create. Here's a quote that I really love to share with, with my clients. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action makes your dreams reality. So this is at the crux of why smart goal planning is so important and why it should be the first step of creating spending plans themselves. Creating a spending plan, also known as a budget. The first step is to determine your net income per month. Your net income is the amount of money that you have left over after you've paid out your expenses for that month. Step two is to determine your monthly fixed expenses. Fixed expenses are expenses that do not change in terms of the amount that is due each month. An example of this could be a car loan. An example is a mortgage as well. Step three is to determine your monthly variable expenses. Variable expenses are often thought of as what we need to pay back um, that's not consistent month to month. So one example of a, of a variable expense is a credit card. Most people do not spend the exact same amount um, on their credit card each month, and therefore they have to um, pay back different amounts each month. Step four is to prioritize. For some folks, um, there might be certain elements of, of what is more important to them when it comes to their daily life than um, for other folks. Someone who loves to go to the gym uh, and uh, who loves to buy protein powder and who loves to um, purchase other supplements in order to um, keep their bodies in shape, uh, you know, that person might prioritize uh, the amount of money that they spend on health and wellness higher than someone um, who is not going to the gym every day and prefers to just run outside. So it's really important, it's quite critical to prioritize for yourself. What do you feel um, on a daily basis will help you feel happy and safe and secure? And use that question to go through the prioritization step in step number four here in a way that's tailored to you. Step number five. It's important to track 
how we're spending on a monthly basis and really even on a daily basis so that we can have a comprehensive sense of where our money is going each month. There are ways to do this um, in Excel. You can also utilize a log journal if you prefer to jot things down physically um, with, your, um, with a pen and paper. Uh, and there are also digital ways, and I'll get into um, a couple of examples later on in this presentation. There are also digital ways to track our spending as well. And last but not least, step number six, we want to decrease our spending. So no matter what, even if we are um, in the green, that means we have a positive net income after all of our expenses have been paid each month, it's helpful to increase that positive net income by more. And we can do that by decreasing the amount that we're spending. This means that when we look at our spending plan, we want to think of other options uh, for uh, paying for the same type of service or item uh, in a cheaper way without necessarily having to sacrifice the level of service or the type of uh, object um, or item that we feel is important to us. So, for instance, a great example of where many folks can save uh, is to rethink their car insurance policies, or for others uh, to um, review and, and explore other cell phone payment plans as well. So as I mentioned, it's incredibly important to still, no matter if you're in the green or if you're in the red, um, when you're doing your spending plan, it's important to think of ways where you can cut back on some spending without sacrificing uh, the level or the quality of service that you're receiving from that good. So why is it important to create a spending plan? This might be something that many of you are thinking about in the, at this moment, so I certainly want to address that question. A spending plan can be thought of as a step-by-step -step guide for meeting expenses in a given time period. In other words, it can help us to reduce anxiety by having a visual sense of where all of our money is being spent in a given time frame, and it allows us to see where our money, our income sources um, are, and we can track how that money goes from an income source to being paid out in order to provide um, payment for an expense of ours. So if someone has uh, subscriptions to, um, to a video streaming service and they have subscriptions to, um, to uh, radio service and to newspapers and magazines. Uh, all of those might have been purchased at different times uh, and it can become tedious and, and, and frankly uh, a lot to keep track of that just in our minds. So a spending plan helps us by keeping track of all of those expenses, um, especially expenses that we might not see on a daily basis it helps us to keep track of all those expenses in one place. That centralization power of a spending plan is super impactful. And as I mentioned, it gives us a step-by-step -step guide in order to make sure that we are meeting our expenses um, and able to afford to do so each month. Um, and in so doing, it helps to reduce anxiety around concerns of whether we can afford to meet those expenses each month. And most importantly, it gives us a sense of control over our money. This is really important. Um, it's an essential characteristic of folks who, um, who are doing well and who feel that they have the flexibility to make the purchases that they want to make, um, whether it's for pleasure or for business. And that is really, really at the crux of why creating a spending plan is so essential. And last but not least, it helps you to build assets. It helps you to um, prioritize uh, and save money in order to make large purchase purchases um, that can be made um, as a wealth building tool. So for instance, the purchase of a house, that is one asset that certainly appreciates in value over time. So the opportunity to do this, to make that type of large purchase, um, is much better planned for when a spending plan has been integrated uh, into um, into the daily life uh, and at least the weekly uh, financial review of an individual. Uh, and in so doing, uh, by creating a habit around, um, around developing and sustaining uh, spending plans, uh, that can really lead to positive um, 
experiences uh, and positive feelings uh, when it comes to overall control of one's money, as well as uh, setting goals and achieving those goals, including spending, um, excuse me, including purchasing the, the buying of a house. Spending plan steps. It's important to keep track of your daily spending, as I mentioned before, and to calculate your monthly income and your monthly expenses. That includes both fixed and variable expenses. It's also important to find ways to decrease spending. So whether you um, have a surplus or um, are in a deficit at the end of each month, it's important and it's still uh, an essential part of um, fine tuning your spending plan uh, to find other ways to decrease spending without sacrificing the quality of the service or product that you are spending on. And it's also helpful to find ways to increase your income. So there are many, many different opportunities now, especially within the gig economy, uh, to have external um, and secondary uh, income sources. So not only is it important um, to have a full-time job, it can be helpful uh, to have side hustles that are um, ways in which we can monetize the skill sets and the interests that we already have. Another question you might be wondering is, how can I track my daily spending digitally? So understanding where your money goes is super helpful. As I mentioned before, that's really at the core of why a spending plan uh, is a helpful tool for having more control over your money. So there are two apps here. One is called Mint and the other is called You Need a Budget. Both of these websites are super helpful in tracking your money um, and doing so digitally. So I certainly recommend these uh, and um, encourage you to explore them for yourself. Last but not least, it's important to determine what exactly is income and what exactly are expenses. So if you're wondering what would be categorized as income, some key examples include wages from um, full-time or part-time job, as well as self-employment income, public assistance and child support or alimony should also be considered as income. Uh, any interest in dividends from an investment portfolio should be considered as income, as well as social security and other sources such as tips. And on the opposite end, for expenses, many of expenses, many first think of expenses um, in terms of food and utilities, rent and mortgage, um, but cell phones and car payments are other expenses that are uh, often very important to many people. Uh, and for students especially, student loans uh, can become expenses uh, once they're out of deferment uh, that many students um, must then prioritize when they weren't necessarily prioritizing them uh, during their actual study. Uh, last but not least, travel and clothes are other examples of expenses uh, that are important for many people, um, but that are often uh, considered in um, less prioritized uh, categories. <clears throat> last but not least, it's important to recognize that um, the gross income uh, of an individual is all of the money that they're bringing in, <coughs> excuse me, and their net income, the difference there is that the net income is that gross income minus expenses. So that net income is what do you have left at the end of the month after you've paid all of your expenses for that month. And what can you do next? You can certainly approach and, um, and utilize a program like the Community College Credit Building Initiative uh, to engage with financial coaches that can help you tailor uh, your SMART goals as well as your spending plan to those SMART goals. Uh, and this is an important resource for many uh, community college students. Uh, and it's one that I encourage you to utilize um, and to utilize in a way that is tailored for you and your long-term as well as short-term goals uh, for both your education as well as your personal.